Hello, everyone. For those of you just joining, um, David Glasner, Superintendent of the Shagard City School District. We're just going to wait a minute or two uh, as more folks join the webinar. I'll be with you shortly. All right, everyone, we're going to get started. I know we uh, have a slightly smaller crowd today than in past webinars, which is uh, totally fine. Um, I will be sharing some updates with everyone. And then as we have done in the past, uh, we will open up the uh, chat feature so folks can ask questions or share other comments. Uh, this webinar is being recorded uh, and we will share it with our community uh, following this session. Again, my name is David Glasner, Superintendent of the Shagard City School District, and I'm here to provide you with some update updates regarding our facilities planning process. Uh, also, uh, we do have some information that is really hot off the presses that I'll be sharing a little bit later in the webinar today. So stick with us. Uh, we have some exciting news to share. Uh, as always, uh, and if you've seen any one of my presentations up until now, you have probably seen this slide. Uh, the information that we're sharing today is as up-to-date as we have it, uh, and information continues to change and evolve, and as a result, so do our plans. Uh, so the information that you're seeing today is tentative and can be subject to change. I wanted to start uh, today's webinar by talking a little bit about our preschool program, both uh, some information about our current preschool program, as well as information about our plans for expanding our preschool program. Uh, after that, I'll talk a little more about other plans related to uh, our K-8 programming. So in terms of our current preschool program, we have an excellent pre-K program. Uh, our, enro our enrollment right now sits at about 107 students and includes full-time and half-day students. Uh, our enrollment numbers have increased uh, since last year, and we also expect that they will continue to increase uh, through next year. Um, so... We are still in the Onaway school building, and next year the pre-K program will remain in the Onaway pre-K program. We'll be transitioning the pre-K program to the Ludlow school building at the beginning of the 2025-2026 school year. Uh, our pre-K program, as I mentioned, is an excellent program. Uh, we recently had our annual state uh, compliance inspection. Uh, we had the best inspection that we've had in recent memory. Uh, we do not have any corrective action plans for our program. Uh, this is a good indication uh, as it relates to our step up to quality review. We expect to undergo that review process next fall. At this point, we do expect that our program will meet the requirements for a five-star rating, uh, which we're excited about. So again, I think those are just, again, indications that uh, we have an excellent program, uh, and we've continued to strengthen our program over the past few years. I would like to acknowledge uh, we have an excellent preschool faculty and staff. Uh, this year, we have a new pre-K coordinator. Uh, her name is Dejanae Lawson. And if anyone has any questions related to pre-K that, uh, that extend beyond this webinar, you are always welcome to reach out to Ms. Lawson directly. She's always help, happy to answer any questions related to our preschool program. So in terms of the Ludlow School Building, as I mentioned, we'll be going into the Ludlow School Building. Our pre-K program will go into the Ludlow School Building at the beginning of the 25-26 school year. We are in the process of uh, beginning the renovation process for the Ludlow School Building. Uh, you can see that uh, this is an image of the site map for the Ludlow School Building, the current Ludlow site. Uh, this uh, box over here, this square in kind of a maroon brown color is the actual building itself. A couple of things I just want to highlight on this site plan, um, and I want to acknowledge the Ludlow Community Association, 
uh, and others have provided incredibly helpful feedback and input uh, and thinking through the design for this site plan. A couple things I want to highlight. You'll see that we have the field space that's currently part of the Ludlow School site. The field space will remain, uh, will essentially remain untouched. So the softball field and the soccer field that are currently part of the Ludlow School site will continue to be so to be there. At this point, we do expect that the fields will be accessible while the renovation is taking place. Uh, if that changes, we will, of course, let everyone know. Um, the parking area here uh, has been expanded a little bit to allow for pickup and drop off. Uh, both um, the majority of pickup and drop off takes place uh, with families driving to the site. Uh, we do have some school district transportation, buses or vans that help transport students with special needs. And we've accommodated both of those types of vehicles in this parking area and drop off site. Last thing I wanna highlight is the playground space. You'll see in this site map that there are two playgrounds. Uh, one of the playgrounds uh, will be really aimed for the usage of students at the site. So our preschool students, three and four year olds, uh, we also heard uh, from the community that it would be great to include a play space for older students uh, that community members could use during non-school hours. And so we are also including a playground space for older students and children who live in the Ludlow community neighborhood. So there are just some highlights from the Ludlow site plan. Uh, in terms of the internal design process, we are in the we're we are currently in the midst of designing the inside of the Ludlow School building. Uh, our architect group is the GPD group. Uh, they have been instrumental in helping generate and collect feedback from a wide range of stakeholders. Our current preschool staff and faculty have really been a critical part of the design process. We do expect to be able to share uh, information related to the inside design of the building within the next couple of months. We are working on putting some uh, close to finishing touches on the inside design of the building. And we are looking forward to being able to share that with our community for feedback within the next couple of months. In terms of our projected capacity, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 107 students currently enrolled in pre-K. Uh, once Ludlow opens, we expect to have 12 classrooms uh, and we expect to be able to accommodate 250 to 350 students. It really depends on full day and half day configurations. If anybody listened to any part of the board meeting yesterday evening, uh, I think you probably understand that uh, preschool enrollment is much more complex and has a wide range of factors that may not be as applicable in K through 12 enrollment. Uh, so it is uh, an ever evolving number because of our uh, requirement and um, because of the requirements we have to meet related to meeting students with special needs and helping identify students with special needs at their early childhood or preschool level. So that's some information about our expanded pre-K site. In terms of the actual program, uh, our goal in terms of expanding the pre-K program is to ensure that all Shea Grade students have access to a high quality preschool program. Uh, we know that there are uh, many high quality, there are a number of other high quality pre-K providers. Our goal is not to compete with them. Our goal is to collaborate with them and provide additional high quality pre-K seats for our students and families. We did hold a prospective family night uh, about a month ago. This is a prospective pre-K family night for the upcoming school year. We had just over 20 families who attended. We are also exploring a wide range of channels and opportunities to continue to share information about our pre-K program and enrollment opportunities, including things like Shaker Life Magazine and other community events. We always encourage community members, if you have questions about our pre-K program, or know families who may be interested in our pre-K program to please reach out directly to the school district uh, so that we can provide that information for you. Uh, in terms of wanting to make sure that the pre-K program is accessible for all of our students, especially as we move to expanding it, we are looking at some opportunities related to funding for both the pre-K program and also for 
uh, families interested in enrolling students in the program. Uh, we're currently in the process of gathering information about Cuyahoga County's Universal Pre-K Grant Program and exploring what that would mean for Shakers Program. Uh, I just want to be clear when we talk about the Universal Pre-K Program, uh, I know in many states or communities that implies that all students have access to essentially a public preschool program. The Cuyahoga County Universal Pre-K Program is a specific grant program. Uh, it comes with a number of um, administrative requirements and other items that we have to uh, meet in order to be eligible for that funding. Uh, and it helps to, we believe it may help to reduce some barriers to accessing the pre-K program, but we're in the process of learning more to make sure that it is something that we want to pursue. Uh, we are also exploring the possibility of program vouchers in order to accommodate families uh, that have typically or historically been marginalized or underrepresented. I want to be clear when we talk about uh, preschool vouchers, that is not the same as talking about ed choice vouchers or vouchers that families use in the K through 12 level to um, receive dollars to use towards non-public, private, uh, or non-public charter schools. Um, these are vouchers that are meant specifically for early childhood needs, uh, and we are looking into that program to see if it's something that would benefit our community and meet our family needs. Uh, I've mentioned already some of the engagement we're doing. We expect to continue to engage with our community to help uh, recruit and generate interest in our expanded pre-K program. We are also in the process of looking at um, creating a community stakeholder group specifically related to pre-K planning. Uh, more information we expect will follow in the coming weeks and months. I mentioned our other preschool providers in our community. We do collaborate regularly with our preschool partners, uh, including meeting with them uh, in person and also regular communication and collaboration. Uh, as I've mentioned before, our goal is not to compete, but to collaborate in order to best meet the needs of children in the Shaker Heights city and community. So that really concludes uh, the pre-K portion of this webinar. I'm now going to shift gears and talk about planning updates related to our other K through eight buildings and facility planning. Uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we do have some news that's hot off the inf hot off the presses today to share with everybody, which we're excited to be able to do. Um, before I get to that, I just want to uh, reference. I know I've shared this timeline before. I'm going to share it again. Uh, this timeline shows uh, the different decisions that we have to make as we prepare for the beginning of next school year and the transition from Woodbury Elementary School. Uh, we remain on schedule with this timeline. Uh, you'll see, for example, that we uh, expect to share staffing decisions in February of 2024. As we have said earlier, and as I'll reiterate here, we expect to share staffing decisions for our uh, certified staff for our teachers later this week. Uh, we expect to share staffing information for our classified staff, for our classified employees, for our non-teachers uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, by around the middle of March. So we remain on schedule. And you'll also see information here, uh, family information nights. We recently announced family information nights for rising sixth and rising for rising sixth and rising seventh grade students, I believe, and we'll continue to share additional information about those kinds of info opportunities as they become available. Uh, so here's some uh, news that's hot off the presses. Uh, we are moving forward with a plan to increase student supports for our kindergarten through eighth grade students and buildings. Uh, moving forward for next year, each elementary school building will now have a full-time counselor. That is not something that we currently have in place. Uh, given that we will be adding to the number of students in our elementary buildings, we believe it's important to have additional student support available for students and families. We also will be adding additional student support coordinator positions in our elementary buildings. Um, at the elementary, at the middle school level, I apologize, at the middle school level, we will be increasing the number of student support coordinators from two to three and it will be increasing the number of counselors at the middle school level from three to four. 
Uh, we uh, believe strongly that it's important to have supports in place uh, in our buildings to work with students and families. We've always believed that. We believe it's especially important as students experience some transitions next year. And so we're excited to share this uh, information related to staffing with our community. Uh, in terms of music programming, uh, we shared this last week, uh, but I just wanna highlight here that we have developed a plan for music programming for next year. Uh, students in grades four and five will now uh, begin instrumentation. We currently begin instrumentation in grade five, so we'll be uh, adding that to the fourth grade music curriculum. Uh, and this will be kind of a rotating opportunity for students to learn different instruments uh, in fourth and fifth grade. Uh, we're very excited about that. In sixth grade, uh, students will now have the opportunity to, uh, student, all students will select their music ensemble program, if you will. Uh, the, options, the options that they can choose from include uh, choir, band, and orchestra. Currently, students are only able to select choir starting in seventh grade, so we're excited that now students will be able to select choir starting in sixth grade. Also, all music education at the middle school will be offered every day. Currently, sixth grade students uh, have music education uh, multiple times a week, but not every day. And so we're excited that now sixth grade students will have the chance to have music every day. So uh, that's information that, again, we shared uh, last week, but I wanted to highlight here. And again, a big thank you to everybody who has provided input and feedback in this process, uh, including uh, many of our music faculty and teachers. I know we have gotten questions about modular units. Uh, just a reminder, we will be installing modular units at our middle school uh, to accommodate the additional students who will be there. Uh, we have not yet determined which students will be using modular units, uh, but we're working on that as we speak. Uh, University School, which is down the block from us, has modular units installed as well because they're doing some renovation construction work. We were able to take some pictures of the modular units that they have. These are the same modular units that we will have in place at our middle school as well. You'll see the picture on the left uh, is just an external picture. The picture on the right is a picture of what the modular units look like inside. Uh, you can see that they look uh, really nice. Um, here is a picture, some pictures of what the modular unit classrooms look like. Again, uh, they are very nice inside. They have uh, air conditioning and climate control. Uh, we do expect that some of our modular units will have plumbing. Uh, and restrooms attached to them. Some of our modular units will not. Uh, we expect to have a total of about 10 modular units, if I'm not mistaken, at the middle school. And we're currently working with the city and others to finalize the plans for the modular unit installation. Uh, I believe that concludes my webinar for this afternoon. I appreciate everybody spending time with me today. Uh, we're going to open up the chat function, and I'd like to welcome uh, Kristen Miller, one of our members of our communications department, who's going to help uh, facilitate any questions or comments that come through. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you again, everybody, for being here today. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Glasner. Um, so the chat is now open for anyone if you'd like to put your messages in there. I think we'll start with um, the question... Uh, Dr. Glasner, can you explain the role of the student support coordinator? Sure. Uh, great question. Um, student support co coordinator uh, kind of does what the title sounds like, which is to provide support to students. Uh, they're usually involved in a number of different um, activities throughout the day. They may kind of on maybe maybe a more of a reactive side, they may provide support to students who are experiencing some challenges in school. Um, maybe having difficulty navigating social situations. Uh, on a proactive side, student support coordinators help the school building, teachers, school leadership uh, think through ways to engage students in social and emotional learning. Uh, so student support co coordinators help with, for example, uh, planning for thinking through social emotional learning curriculum. They may help with uh, planning for uh, advisory periods or morning meetings. Um, those kinds of things, and really serve as a resource to students and, by extension, families, uh, teachers, and staff in helping support students' social-emotional learning needs. 
Perfect. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship between the music classes and the art classes in grades six through eight? Um, will, so will all students take music? Will seventh and eighth choose between music and art if, as they'd have done in the past? Can you explain that a little bit? You know, I thought that question might come up and I'm not yet prepared to answer that question. I don't have that information off the top of my head. We will clarify that for future webinars, uh, whether or not students still have to make that choice or not. Um, we will make sure to clarify that in the future. Perfect. Um, have there been any decisions yet on the high school start and end times? Uh, there, we're very close to finalizing that. We expect to be able to share that within the next couple of weeks. So we have not yet finalized high school start and end times. We don't expect them to change drastically. They may change a little bit. We will share that information within the next couple of weeks. Perfect. Um, next question. What do we know about the students who are enrolled in preschools throughout Shaker, the ones that we uh, are partnering with? Um, and with them included in it, with our collaboration, what is the enrollment that we're expecting at Ludlow? Uh, good questions. Uh, some of this information we have, uh, some of this information we're learning about. Um, in terms of enrollment at other preschool providers, we know that you know many of our students uh, do go to other pre-K providers um, prior to coming to our kindergarten. Um, just to give a sense of the numbers, uh, we have about 350 to 400 students in any one grade level. We have about 100, a little more than 100 students in our pre-K program. That is including both three and four-year-olds. So let's, if it was split about evenly, we would we could say we have about 53-year-olds, about 54-year-olds. There are still lots of three and four-year-olds uh, we can't accommodate in our current pre-K program. Uh, we know that about 50% of students come into our kindergarten without a pre-K program. Um, those who do come with pre-K who haven't gone to our pre-K program go to other providers in this area. As an example, uh, ECEC, which I know is a popular choice for many of our families, preschool. Uh, from what we understand, we think about 60 to 70 percent. It varies a little bit, but about 60 to 70 percent of their enrollment is comprised of uh, Shaker students and residents. Um, there was a second part to that question, Kristen. Can you remind me what it was? Sure. It was the with um, in collaboration with our partners, what kind of enrollment do we expect yeah. at Ludlow? Uh, so again, our goal is to make sure that all students have access to a high quality pre-K program. We can accommodate somewhere between 250 to 350 students at Ludlow. It depends on full-time uh, as compared to part-time sections. Our hope is to be able to come as close to filling Ludlow to capacity as possible. We know in talking with families, different families have different considerations that they're uh, taking into account in terms of whether or not to enroll in a pre-K program or an hour pre-K program. Often that uh, connects to scheduling. So some families prefer a full day experience or maybe have work commitments that really require a pre-K, a full day pre-K experience. Uh, cost is another factor that families are taking into account. We're doing our best to reduce, eliminate, or minimize those barriers, any barriers to entry to our pre-K program. Uh, but we do hope to get as close as possible to en full enrollment at Ludlow. We also know it's going to evolve over time and build up over time. So if we don't have full enrollment at the beginning, we do expect that it will continue to grow over time. The only thing, other thing I'll mention related to this, I know because we've gotten questions related to uh, before care and after care. We are working with our before and after care provider champions to develop pro before and after care programming for pre-K. Uh, there are also space needs uh, that before and after care programming requires, and we're looking into that. We're also looking at ways that we can connect families uh, who need before and after care with other potential child care options in the community. If we can't accommodate everybody in our before care and after care programming, there may be other programs or partners that can. Got it. Uh, so another question, um, can you talk a little bit about what we know yet uh, about as far as language acquisition and our current carousel model um, and what plans are for that? Sure. Um, so we expect to be able to share information about world language within the coming days, probably. We're pretty close to finalizing that information. But what I can share 
for now is at the elementary level, the K-5 level, we're working on incorporating Spanish into our single subject or specials rotation. Currently, uh, students take about 20 minutes of Spanish uh, a couple of times a week. We are looking at ways that we can make that longer and more consistent like the other single subject schedule schedules. Um, at the middle grades level, um, for next year, rising sixth grade students will select a world language. Uh, and the reason we are very, we know that for sure is because those rising sixth grade students, they're currently fifth grade students, they are taking that carousel now. We are working on determining whether or not moving forward, sixth grade students will have a carousel. We don't yet know that. We probably will not have a decision related to the sixth grade carousel until some point next academic year. Uh, and we will continue to both collect input and feedback and share that information as we have it. But for next year, rising sixth grade students will select their world language. Beyond that, we're working on it. <clears throat> Got it. Uh, let's see. Another question is about the plan uh, for busing for grades six through eight. Uh, this person points out that there is a <clears throat> difference developmentally between those age ranges. And if there is a plan to discuss busing, um, busing plans around that. Um, so at this point, we expect that sixth grade students will be on the same buses as seventh and eighth grade students. They're going to the same buildings. Um, we are working on routing uh, and staffing for those routes. Uh, so we don't yet know the numbers of buses. So for example, a bus that right now carries, goes a specific route and carries the seventh and eighth grade students may be at capacity or close to capacity. So we have to decide whether to change that route add more buses to the route, those kinds of decisions we're working on. At this point, though, we do expect sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders to, to be on buses together. <clears throat> All right, next question. Um, and this is the last one that's currently in the chat. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the music carousel for the combined fourth and fifth grade experience? This person is asking what happens to the current fourth graders or the rising fifth graders who did not start that experience this year, what will their fifth grade experience in music look like next year? So generally speaking, we expect that uh, starting in fourth grade, students will have, uh, I like the use of the word carousel, a carousel of instruments that they will get to play and be exposed to. Um, I think we've said it's around eight instruments. I don't remember exactly the number. Um, we don't yet know, given that the next year's fifth graders, fourth current fourth grade students did not experience that instrument carousel this year. I don't yet know um, either how we will make up for that next year or, you know, what instruments they may or may not be exposed to. I certainly recognize that next year will be a year of transition. We do expect next year's fifth graders to have exposure to some instruments. Um, I don't know whether it will be all or not, and we're still working on that. Um, and again, our music department has been very helpful throughout this process, and I know are working on some of those details as we speak. Okay, well, I think that is all that we have in the chat. Um, I just want to remind everyone that our next webinar is scheduled for Wednesday, March 13th. Um, we will put that on the calendar as well, uh, if it's not already on there. Um, and we will be sharing that in our uh, regular facilities updates as well. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Always a pleasure. Thank you.